Hello, and welcome to ZimDocs. I'm Dr. Abstract. Let's take a look at the ZimDocs for frame. So the docs can be found at zimjs.com slash docs.html. And here is the frame docs. Open that up. It's got lots of parameters such as scaling, width, height, color, outer color, assets and path. And those are the ones that we use the most, so we'll take a look at those. What I want to look at first is a bit about the scaling. So if we come to the Zim site, this is the Zim Neo site. If we come to the Zim site under code, we can see that there's uh, an example of Zim frame here. And we press that and it shows the different types of scaling. So that's a fit mode, and here's an example of it fitting. Here is a full mode, and that opens up to the full screen. So those are the two that we use the most, fit and full. You can also uh, put the frame right in a tag. So there's a frame fitting right in a tag, like so, with the tag mode. And you can load assets through it. So um, this is available on the code site, and it, it shows you the different templates. Let's go into a code template now. Just that. Badoop. So here we have a code template that can be found on the code page as well. And you can copy that and come in and it loads CreateJS and ZimJS. And then down here we're preparing to use the frame right here. And this is what the template does. There's our new frame. We usually store that in a variable called frame. You can have more than one frame, and that means uh, more than one stage on, on the page at once, but usually we just have a single frame. We have an event. When the frame is ready, we call this function, and then this is where we put our code down in here, and that's the end of the ready event right there. We would stage.update. So we're taking a look at frame now. The parameters are the scaling, and in this case we're using the fit mode. The template will talk about the different types of scaling right there and give you descriptions. Fit will fit within the browser window. Full opens up to the full browser window, but you have to handle scaling inside yourself, which Zim has a lot of classes to help out with that, like the layout class. And here we're giving a width and a height of the frame, and these are the dimensions that will fit within the window. And that's handy to code that way, because then you know how big to make everything. And then Zim will fit it inside the window. So this is uh, the fit mode is the default mode, you could call it, and certainly the beginning of Zim. If you're just starting Zim, then use the fit mode here. We give it two colors. Now we don't have to store these things in variables up here. We could put them directly in here, such as quote fit, like so. But uh, sometimes that helps uh, see what's going on. So we have two colors available, and these are normal HTML colors. You could say quote red as well, or quote number sign CC000, or CCC. Etc. We're using Zim colors right here, and there happens to be a lighter and a darker, and that's what. Uh, why don't we take a look? Save this up and open in a browser. There's what she looks like, uh, just like that. Oh wait, that's not quite right. Is it lighter, darker? There should be some darker stuff going on there. What happened? Let's take a look at that again. Refresh. F12. Scaling uh, with the tag must exist. Did we mess up? Fit scaling. Oh, um, right. That's not the word scaling. <clears throat> That's scaling. So what would ha what would ha happening there is it was looking for a tag. Note that we checked the, the F12 there to find out what was going on. There was something broken. We hit F12 and it said, Zim frame scaling HTML tag with ID scaling must exist. We had put quotes around that by accident when indeed what we were meaning is to bring in the fit mode there. So quote scaling like so would look for an HTML tag called scaling and that would have to come down here 
normally the frame is made by or the, the the canvas is made by the zim frame but if we say a specific tag we could have an, a tag with an id here a div tag for instance with an id equal to scaling or well how about we'll put it custom like that custom and then you would have to match that up here custom so this would be uh, targeting that tag it would put the frame in that tag. All right, and this tag could be any size. It could be in with a bunch of HTML. Should we see that? Blah, 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 blah. Here's some HTML. Well, without breaks in there, that's not going to do anything, is it? So now we've got, <laughs> give, me, give me a break <laughs> without a capital B. So now we've got a couple, we've got a bit of HTML. We've got a tag here, and our frame is going to target that tag. So we save that. And refresh here. Oh, <laughs> because the background is darker, we couldn't see our HTML. But there's our HTML. Here is our frame, the size that we said. Okay, if we don't want it that big, we want it uh, 200. I say you're doing a little promo ad or something like that, or a Zim button uh, inside of an HTML page. There is a frame with a smaller dimension. Uh, sitting inside of our HTML page. Okay, so you you would uh, give that a an ID that matches the ID. I would use a div if I were you. Don't use a canvas. <laughs> Zim will make the canvas for you inside this tag, so you don't do that. All right, normally the frame has no tag down there, as it says here. You see that? Canvas with my ID is made by the Zim frame. And we have uh, the scaling here, which will be fit mode. So now the fit mode comes in and it takes the width and height. Well, we don't want that width and height anymore. 1024, for instance. You don't have to have this one, 768. It's just an old browser or an old uh, Windows dimension, isn't it? I'm not sure. So there we go. Now that is the frame that has made that size fitting within the browser window. You like that? And on that, we can put our code. Bar, well, just make a new circle, dot center, dot drag. And we save that up and refresh here. Now we have a new circle that is centered and we can drag that circle. So how about assets? You've got two choices with assets. The assets are images and sound and so forth. You can use the frame.load assets. So from within here, you can say frame.load assets and pass in the assets and the path and stuff like that. And then you need an event that says that the assets have loaded. So that would be frame.onComplete. You can see assets are done. Call this function. And in here, you can say frame.asset, whatever you called your asset, dot center, like so. And you would stage.update in there as well, because these assets got loaded after this stage.update. So this is how we did it in Zim for quite some time, and it was, in a sense, a two-step process, isn't it? You would load the frame first. When the frame is ready, then you would load the assets. Now, we simplified that recently, Zim 8 or something like that, where we can load the assets right in the main frame call. Now, that has the advantage of just uh, being a little bit easier. We only have one event uh, when the ready event will trigger when those assets are loaded. And then right in right in here we can use the asset. A disadvantage, a slight disadvantage is we have to wait, everything is waiting until the assets have loaded. And that's why initially they were done in two steps is that because sometimes you want to present some information in Zim that uh, say a label, for instance. And so you would see that label instantly, and in the background, your assets would load. So it just depends on how many assets you have. So let's take a look at loading assets right in the frame tag here. We'll follow the same format where we had these variables up here, and we'll say variable assets. 
is equal to, now this would be an array of assets. If you only have one asset, for instance here, we're going to load the logo.png from the assets folder. So you could put logo.png in here, and then comma, something else, something else, including sound, including fonts, um, what else, uh, text, that kind of stuff. Usually it's images, images and sound. But if you've only got one thing, then you can just save it like that, var load assets. And uh, then var path is equal to, where is it? If our frame is right here, which is where it is, and this is the assets folder parallel to the frame, it, that means we're in assets slash. So you need that slash on the end to say it's a directory. So here is where the assets are in this path. Now you can do this with all one step and just put the, ass, put the path right in here if you wanted to. Later down below when we refer to this asset, we would then have to take this whole thing. So usually we split that up into here's the assets or a list of assets, and then here's the path that the assets are in. And these are the two parameters that come next. So we've seen the scaling, the width and height. Yes, I got it. Uh, the background, or the, this is the color of the stage, and this is the outer color, the color outside the fit mode. So that's no problem. And now we arrive at the assets, and then oops, comma the path. So those are the next two parameters. And what that means is we can, instead of bringing in a circle here, we will say frame dot asset, what was it called again? Logo dot png dot center. And now we have a centered logo from frame dot asset. So you're welcome to use the asset, <coughs> excuse me, directly from frame dot asset, or you could assign it var logo equals frame dot asset. Uh, indeed, we could take that whole thing, and then you could use that later, uh, have access to the logo if you needed it. Okay, let's see this work. <coughs> Excuse me, grumble, grumble. We refresh, and there's the Zim logo uh, brought in, if that's too big, dot ska, 0.5, centered on the stage, and we have our asset brought in. All right, hopefully that's clear. Now, if you're wanting to, if you have a bunch of assets and you want to provide either a waiter, a waiter is a very fast thing, that would go here, comma, the next one is what type of preloader or waiter, or so here, let me show you a couple. New waiter. Now, this is gonna load so quickly you won't see it, but that passes in a waiter, which is just a little bar with three dots that go dot, 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 dot. There's also a progress bar, new progress. Uh, that by default gives you a little circle that spins around, but it, it's not, it doesn't spin forever. It, it shows you the percentage of the loading as it goes around the circle. So it only fills up once. And so that's like a progress bar. And indeed, if you pass in a type of rectangle or bar, it's called, you can change that to be a traditional progress bar. A strip, a rectangular strip. So that's the next parameter there of Zim frame. We're trying to keep these, these docs short, but they also should try and give you as much information as possible. So let's go back to the docs and take a look. We'll have a, a read through some of the other parameters that are available there. So here we are. Oops, not F12, F11. F11, so we've seen right up to the progress bar. There's rollover. If you're building only for mobile, uh, by the way, rollover then is turned off, so it's, it's no big deal. But uh, you rollovers are a little bit expensive processing-wise to, to be able to track whether you're rolling over things. So if you don't have to roll over anything, set that to false. By default, that's true. Same with touch. If you're not doing touch, you're welcome to turn that off. By default, touch is true. Scroll top is a way that we scrolled to the top in old browsers or, or old mobile devices, old iPhones that would then take away the top bar. Now in new iPhones, we're stuck with the bloody top bar on mobile web apps, so that's annoying. Anyway, align and V align, when you're in fit mode, you can make them align to the left or to the 
to the top and and you see that that will affect your alignment it's pretty easy top middle bottom and by default they're middle and left right and center or middle um, well, I guess it would be left, right, and center, top, middle, bottom. <laughs> uh, the canvas ID, if you don't want the ID of my ID, you can pass in an ID there, and then your canvas will have that ID. You're welcome to then style that canvas afterwards if you so desire, etc., based on that ID. Rolls per second, that relates to your rollover. So, um, again, the more rolls per second, the more processing that takes, so you can adjust that if you want. Uh, the delay on various mobile devices, sometimes scaling the canvas uh, it doesn't happen right away. It's very annoying. So we've implemented a delay series in there, and that will only go so long, but you can increase that if you find that on some mobile device, for some reason, the scaling's not fitting properly. Hopefully you won't. We've uh, gone through extensive error checking on that. Canvas check, that is uh, checking to make sure you have a canvas and you can specify, I believe in there, if you want to see what these things are, you come down into the docs and you look up canvas check. Right there, default true, check to see if there's a canvas support, uses Windows HTML canvas, that kind of thing. There is as well um, another thing, let's see where to go, I don't see it there, a way to provide alternate uh, alternate data. It's in there somewhere, so have a look for that. So alternate canvas data. The GPU is, do you want um, to use the GPU? Now the difference is if you don't, then it uses a normal stage with the canvas. If you say GPU, then it will use the stage GL stage right here. So have a look at the docs for stage GL. There are tricky bits in there um, in that uh, you can only have images on the stage GL. So everything needs to be cached that you create. You cache it and that treats it as an image or brought in as images. And that would be your GPU. So uh, if you turn the GPU on, then probably you're going to run into issues where you can't see your things in Zim. So you want to make sure be careful there. Um, GPU object is extra information that you can pass in about the GPU, such as is it anti-aliased, etc. So have a read there. Next frame. If you make multiple frames, you can specify the order of them, and um, that allows you to have multiple frames on top of one another that are all interactive. So you can pass along you can pass along, uh, say you have a GPU canvas for maximum processing and you're doing a generative art or something, but you want to put a slider on top of that. Uh, you can then make a new stage or new frame and put it right on top and that handles your interactivity in a regular way. You would then pass on next frame to say if, if you wanted to click on the mouse on the frame underneath or something like that, you would pass whatever your earlier frame was and uh, so a bit advanced but that's that stuff next stage is the same deal and allow default mm, allow default is if you uh, by default Zim turns off certain keyboard controls like arrows up and page up and uh, can't remember, maybe spacebar or something. Uh, what those do is they would move the browser window. And even in a fit mode, you would see that movement, or in a full mode, you would see that movement, and you're not expecting that. You don't want that. You don't want people to move around your canvas. So by default, um, we do not allow the default. <laughs> So that can run into problems sometimes if you've got text in there and you want to use the arrows in your text, you may have to uh, deal with that. Now we've tried to deal with most of the obvious situations. For instance, if this is an embedded canvas, as in not the fit mode, not the full mode, then we then allow default is actually turned on true so that you can scroll up and down with mouse wheels and, and stuff like that. So have a read there, that's what that's up. A load fail object, by default we show, <clears throat> uh, 
excuse me, a bunch of uh, little circles. This is when an object doesn't load. It's like a broken image pick, uh, icon in a sense. So if objects don't load, if you ever see little round circles within circles, the Zim colors, that's our broken icon thing. You can change that to be a different <laughs> image or something, a different object if you want. Uh, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. And sensors is where if you want to turn on the events uh, for sensors. So if we scroll down on any of the documentation here, we go past our various parameters. Here's methods that can be done. We should take a peek at those. There's properties that can be done. Here are events. So we get most of the events. In the, in the case of the uh, full mode, you'll want to know about the resize event. That allows you to uh, figure out that the browser window has been resized and resize your content if you want. But anyway, there are these device orientation and device motions, and they're sensors to do almost like, a, are you facing north, south, east, west? That's device orientation, and device motion is your tilt. Well, you uh, must set the frame sensors parameter to true to be able to capture the device motion for tilt and device orientation. Uh, for the tilt, you're given an event object with an acceleration property for X, Y, and Z. Other, uh, for the device orientation, you're given an event object with rotation in X, Y, and Z. All right. Uh, there's also some events, since we're down here on the frame, provides us with a ready event. That's what we capture, a failed event if it didn't work. Resize, orientation, um, will tell you the orientation changes, whether you're horizontal or landscape. And you just, uh, at that point, if it's changed the orientation, you can rescale or something like that. Uh, key down event, key up event, those are provided as well as a wheel event. So you've got th those three main events. Rather than going outside to the, the document.add event listener, you could say frame dot on uh, key down. So it's just a, a wrapper for those outer events in JavaScript. In that, you can find out the frame.alt key, frame.control key, frame.meta key, and frame.shift key. If those are being held down, then you can ask for those, and that will reply with true if the alt key is being held down, for instance. There are various properties as well. Uh, you might want to grab the canvas, so frame.canvas will refer to the canvas. Mm, that's most likely it. There's this tricky one called Zill, and that references the, the things that would stop the canvas from moving. Uh, for instance, you can access specifically the scroll wheel and turn that back on. Or you can access specifically key down and turn those back on. So uh, that's what that is. In terms of the, uh, the methods, those are of interest. We talked about load assets already. You can load the assets in like this. You've also got more things that you can do, uh, although not really. You can actually pass in an object that holds all of these things as your assets object. So if you wanted to access all of these parameters, uh, have a read through here. So you can pass in a simple array of assets or even just a single asset up above in the, uh, you know, I'm talking in the main frame call. Uh, we saw that. Uh, or you can pass in an assets object that holds any of these parameters. So those are there. Some of the parameters you might be interested, getting a, a bit advanced, I suppose, is um, these different types of things. So there's an audio sprite, for instance. So check out that. There's um, a font object have to take a look at that. Uh, but that's loading in Google Fonts, for instance, and you can load in also uh, things like JSON files and stuff like that. And all of that piggybacks backs on CreateJS's uh, preload JS, so they did the heavy lifting. We've just slightly changed the format of it. And then it looks like we're into the parameters. So that has been a Zim Docs for the Zim Frame. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day. Ciao.